if someone offered you a chance to go back and redo anything in your life, anything, the worst or the best of situations, would you do it? I don't have a fear of dying. I, there's not an ounce of me that's scared to die. My name is Captain Blake Smith, and uh, I fished the Walmart FLW Tour, professional angler and from Lakeland, Florida. I've been fishing since, I guess, the day. I, I, I think my mom actually fished with me in her belly, so uh, probably way before I even made it on this planet. You know, fishing was a necessity for us. Um, we fished to live, um, not lived to fish, I guess, when I was a kid. We, we ate most, most everything that we caught, uh, spent a lot of time fishing in the evenings or fishing on the weekends. We'd actually, uh, we'd sneak into places and <laughs> harvest fish and take them out. So um, fishing was one of the only things I knew growing up. My, uh, my dad was a professional fisherman, or well, was a guide, professional guide. So I knew fishing, like that's what we were all about. My whole life I was a Sunday to Sunday Christian. You know, um, I was there. Um, my heart was there. I remember the day I gave my life to, you know, life to Christ, and I was six. Um, you know, I thought everything was perfect. A little over three years ago, I started having some issues. Now, I was born with a heart problem, um, VSD, a hole in my septum. Everything was normal. I mean, kids are born with it every single day. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing with it was uh, I was able to live. I was able to play sports. I was able to do all the things other kids were able to do, and I never thought twice about it. Well, I started having some issues and uh, went to have additional testing. And a few days later, I get a call back from a doctor, and it was actually a doctor here in Lakeland at Watson Clinic, and he called me, he goes, Blake, I'm, what are you doing right now? I said, I'm driving. He said, um, you need to pull over. And I'm like, what do you mean? He said, call your wife, get her on this phone call, and um, in the meantime, pull over, and we'll talk about it. So Megan gets on there, obviously all upset and worried, not knowing what's going on. And he told Megan that basically I needed to go home, lay down, somebody needed to pick me up. Um, because he was sitting with a team of 10 doctors aboard of the, the highest cardiologists and physicians in the United States. And, and not one of them out of the 10 knew why, how I was still alive. They, they diagnosed me that day with uh, left ventricular hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And um, my septum, the center of my heart, had grown to four times the size of a normal heart. So basically, my heart was choking itself off. Um, you know, obvious the the risk of sudden death. The the street name for uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is sudden death syndrome. You know, it kills more athletes every year than than any other drug or anything like that because they don't know that they have it. You know, they're running across a basketball court or playing ice hockey and they just drop and, and there's no coming back. You cannot come back from it. Um, it's, it's sudden death syndrome for a reason. So um, two days later after going home, um, we went back up to the hospital and he was, uh, the doctor met with us because he was going to put in a, an ICD. I have, a, I have a cardiac defibrillator and pacemaker in my left chest and um, the doctor came in and met with us before the surgery, minutes before the surgery, and, and I was pretty terrified to think that even those three days, two or three days waiting to go to the hospital, that, um, you know, after he told me that out of all the people in the United States, if there was a, a, a list of people at risk for sudden death, that I would be on the top of the list because it was the worst that he'd ever seen. We went in and he met with us before the surgery, and I'll never forget him walking in and saying, you know, there, I, had, I don't usually meet with my, my people before I do the surgery. I do the surgery and meet with them after, but I had to come and tell you because he said it's a 50-50 chance that you're not going to walk out of here today because they have to essentially stop your heart and restart it and um, put you into cardiac arrest and pull you out of cardi cardiac arrest. And he said that he's never had to do that in 10,000 surgeries, that he had never seen one that bad, and he was scared there would be a risk of me not restarting talking to the, the team of doctors that worked on me when they did my surgery, and they had hit me twice with 900 volts to bring me, out, bring me out of it. And they said every single person was sweating bullets in that room because they'd never, most of the time they don't have to hit somebody twice. My wife was very pregnant with our second uh, little girl, Emerson. Uh, Annie was a year old, uh, my oldest, and 
You know, I, I started, I remember immediately praying that, um, that God would give me clarity, that He'd give me peace, and He did, and, and it was a surprising, shocking peace. Um, I remember praying everything that I could possibly pray. And when I say I ran out of things to pray about, I hit a spot where I knew I did not have to say another word to God um, as they wheeled me back there because I knew that when I closed my eyes, when I woke, when I, my eyes were opened, that either I'd be standing face to face with my wife or face to face with my, my Savior. I woke back up um, afterwards and obviously my wife was there. But to know that I was within seconds um, of having that conversation, that true blue conversation with Christ, changed everything. You know, it, my, it rocked my whole world because I knew it was real. Like I knew it wasn't just a, uh, um, a Sunday school thing anymore. I knew that I was within seconds of getting to meet um, my father, you know, my heavenly father. Um, I still have sudden death syndrome. And there's still a 50-50 chance that if I hit the ground today that I might not get back up. Um, and I know I'm ready. I mean, that's, I live every single day knowing that if I drop and my defibrillator doesn't kick or something else that I, I know where I'm going, I know what I'm doing, I, I know that that life will be, that I've lived life to the fullest here and shared the gospel with every person that I can share with. You know, I, I think the, the, one of the, the cool aspects of fishing professionally is, you know, we are fishing for prizes. We are, we're fishing for big, big checks. Um, you know, I'm fishing for 125,000 bucks, I'm fishing for trophies, um, trophies that some men on this planet idolize. You know, whether it's the Forest Wood Cup or a tour level event win, um, and they're huge. Don't get me wrong, I think they're absolutely awesome. But in comparison to my salvation, they mean zero. They don't mean anything. You know, my salvation, my relationship with Christ, my opportunity to be born again into the kingdom is by far the greatest prize I could ever possess. And I cherish that. Uh, if you're questioning that, if you're questioning uh, your relationship with Jesus or wanting to learn more about a relationship with Jesus, you can check us out at idolsaside.com.